understanding of the context of the reading. So this is our research. So the research questions is the first one is what kind of online resources international students at IU use to support their online reading comprehension and why? And the second, how do they uh, find necessary support using online resources? There are not many studies out there uh, that specifically studied uh, uh, contents of, I mean, uh, uh, online reading support strategy, particularly uh, second language online reading support strategy. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to have two approaches. First, uh, we have online survey that uh, sent out um, per, uh, sorry, participation uh, letter to all international students at IU. And also, uh, we had an um, in-depth uh, qualitative study. So for our online survey participants, which we uh, had uh, 291 respondents, um, 41% um, uh, of, of the participants were undergraduate, and 62% was female. Uh, and then uh, they average hours of their internet use uh, in a week was about uh, 32 hours. And then 36% uh, <laughs> of their online resources are written in English. And for our uh, in-depth uh, qualitative study, we had uh, eight international graduate students. Uh, they were all born, in, uh, born and educated outside the U.S. And then they finished their undergraduate study in their uh, respective home countries. And, and English, therefore, is uh, their second language. And uh, they are uh, regarded as advanced in uh, both L1 and L2 uh, literacy based on their uh, status as a graduate student, both the TOEFL and GRE score. Uh, and they are also advanced in their technology use. Uh, there were, uh, among eight uh, participants, uh, there were six uh, Korean um, uh, participants and one uh, Taiwanese, one Chinese participant. Um, they, the participants consisted of uh, three MBA students, uh, three education majors, and two um, science majors, one chemist, one biologist. So uh, let me introduce first uh, our online survey. Uh, so we, we basically wanted to understand uh, the international students' uh, internet use. Uh, what kind of online services uh, they use when they uh, encounter something they don't know while reading online. And also, we wanted to understand uh, what, how they use those uh, uh, resources and, and what kind of strategy uh, they're using. Um, so we developed our uh, questionnaire uh, with consultation with our uh, faculty advisor. Uh, and then we validated through, uh, through a pilot test. We had four, four pilot testers. Uh, experts in uh, different areas, including uh, language education and translation and informatics, and then uh, instructional system technology. Uh, so we, uh, for uh, for incentive uh, of our online survey, we uh, restaurant army on Third Street uh, graciously <laughs> provided us donated 200 worth of restaurant certificate. So. So we, we were able to get a lot of respondents, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then for, uh, in that study, uh, we basically uh, find the uh, Coiro and Doubler's 2007 study was the very close to that we are trying to do, but a little bit different. So uh, we revised uh, and then we uh, pilot tested through our, and then we uh, validated it. So, so in that study, uh, consists of uh, several steps. Uh, first one was uh, when they when we meet our participants, we basically uh, gave them a questionnaire then to understand their demographic information and level of English uh, scores and technology skills and use of internet um, and things like that. And then also before they read, uh, we had a, a short interview. Uh, asking that how much knowledge they have about the text that they are about to read. Uh, they, were, they, they read two kinds of text. The first one was New York Times newspaper article about uh, global warming. Um, the other was uh, a blog posting on, uh, on cloud computing. Um, so we asked how much they know about that. So MBA students were uh, fairly familiar with uh, cloud computing. Um, other students not much, and everyone was uh, at least fairly uh, somewhat uh, familiar with uh, global warming. 
so I we also um, did modeling uh, because as they are a second language student, when we ask them to read something and answer question, they automatically think that automatically think that they are not supposed to say anything. They are not supposed to find any help. So we specifically said that you are supposed to uh, think aloud, and then you are so you are allowed and actually expected to find the help if you don't know don't know anything and if there's anything that help you answer questions. Yeah. So we showed uh, uh, that. So also we also have incentives uh, that not again the <laughs> <laughs> So for uh, think a lot protocol, the the coil doubler study uh, was uh, for uh, elementary students. Uh, so the questions and the content was a little bit uh, different than we want to use. So we we. We tested and we revised. Uh, we revised the, the protocol and recording technology. For their study, they failed in recording the video because of some like difference in the video and the uh, screen. So we used the program called uh, Webcam Studio that really excellently uh, recorded uh, screen data. So uh, we checked uh, within comprehensive questions and interview questions. And then after the final test, uh, final test is over, uh, all researchers are reconvened uh, for training, for data collection and interview. So there were two tests, as I mentioned, in two topics, and uh, followed by nine questions uh, uh, in each text, uh, which consists of um, main idea questions and reading comprehension and vocabulary. And again, we use the Cam Studio for uh, screen data, a Windows recorder for recorder for whole uh, voice data. And then after uh, they they finish their reading and answering their questions, and we uh, asked a few questions, unpleasant questions.